will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord with him at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do tonight, Lord. You've had, you have your way tonight in what we're saying, what we're doing, what we're speaking about, Lord. We know your presence is here. I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Danny, I introduced you. So tell, tell us what you love the most about your roles and what God's currently doing in your life. Well, um, I guess the thing that I love the most and the most important thing in my life is, well, first of all, my relationship with Christ, but, but my wife and my little daughter. I have a 19-month-old little daughter. Her name is Rain. Her name is Neeland Rain, actually. So there's that. <laughs> so you didn't know that? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, her name's Neeland Rain, but we call her Rain, and uh, we spell it R-A-Y-N-E, and it means she sings, or she is singing, and uh, me and my wife blo- both sing. Uh, my wife sings way better than I do, and uh, my church always says that they hired me for her, so I'm just there, and uh, <laughs> so, but yeah, that's the most important thing in my life. We're talking tonight about worshiping the hard times. So if you've been with Christ or you've lived at all, there's hard times, right? Amen? And the best way to walk through those hard times is to worship through them. You agree? So David, in this passage in Psalm 16, he's in close fellowship with God and he's looking for guidance. And he he says, I will praise the Lord who counsels me. And the Lord instructs David at night. And I want you to picture this. What he's saying is the, worst is, is the Lord instructs me in the hard times. You know, the Bible says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He'll go all the way with us even until the end of the world. Amen? So he says, the Lord instructs me even at night. And in response to that help, this is what David does. David blesses the Lord. And, and what, what it does, what it says when it says, bless the Lord, like, like we were singing tonight, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. What that's saying is to speak well of. So when I'm blessing the Lord, I'm speaking high because he is high. I'm speaking about how good and how great and how kind and how loving he is. And that's what David's doing in this scripture. He's speaking well of God. And David's statement, even at night, my heart instructs, instructs me. He's using this Hebrew word, word and, I'll, and I'll tell you in Kentucky hillbilly what it is. Kill yacht. Kill yacht. Yep, somebody. If there's a scholar in here, I'm sorry. I'm from Kentucky. Which, what that is, what that is, is that's the innermost part of you. And what, what he's saying is that the innermost part of me He's instructing me from the inside out. And when the Lord brought a feeling of correction in his life, David learned from it. And David is saying he's working on the inside and he's faithful. And in Psalms, we get a glimpse of the struggles of David, which were many. Like worship leaders and David, it's like we go hand in hand because we're such emotional people, right? Um, and his thoughts and his prayers and his, uh, his songs of psalms are filled with words of victory. But not every psalms is a victorious psalms from David. David writes about the inner struggles of life. And here's the question. What's it like to worship in the hard times? What's the importance of worship in the transition? Because we're all going to go through transitions, Amen. You may be going through one right now. And what's it like? Because, you know, it's easy to worship when the whole room's singing with you and, and the whole room's praising and, and you're like, I'll trust in God, you know, and everybody's like, ah, yeah, I, I trust you right now. But then what's it like when the band's not playing and the cymbals aren't being smacked and Jalen's not on the piano for you, you know, like what's that like? Because it's easy to worship in the moments that, that everybody's together. But what's it like when you're all by yourself? And this is where David found himself so many times. It's just me and you, God. And it's easy to praise when the drummer's all in and everything's happening. But what's it like when you're alone with your thoughts 
So here's the question for you. Danny, what's it like to worship in the hard times? It's a loaded question, but, uh, man, sometimes it's hard, right? I mean, um, sometimes it's hard, but I, I found that that I need it so much, and I, and I need it so much, especially in those times, because if he's not... <sighs> If he's not God still in the hard times, is he really still God to me, you know? And I found that that song we just sang, something has to break. And um, I don't know if y'all are like me, but not only do I, you know, I've gone through some hard times, but also I have a lot of trouble focusing. I have ADHD real bad. And I'm not like, oh, I have ADHD. No, really, I have ADHD. And um, man, sometimes God has to just... Like you were saying earlier, God, his game is better than mine, right? And he breaks through and he helps me to get the right vision of what's actually going on, the right perspective, the eternal perspective to know that this isn't all there is, to know that he's making me more like him and he's, he's walking with me through those times. But I've also found that when I'm going through those hard times that I, I believe and I know that he makes himself more clear to me. And he shows me that he's closer in those times. It helps me get through. And not only does it change sometimes my situations, but most importantly, it changes me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you look at Psalm 16 and 8, it says this, I will keep my eyes always on the Lord with him at my right hand. I will not be shaking. And I love this thought that David's having um, of having his eyes fixed on the Lord. And... David is saying, and he's laser focused on God. And, and, and this is something about David, because I know there's noises in life, and get this, I know there's noises in our life, but we have to keep our focus on Jesus no matter what the noise is. Whether it's left, or it's right, whether it's kids, whether it's uh, family, what it, I'm focused on you, Jesus. Because that's really all that matters in life, is that I'm focused on Jesus, because because. I mean, like, social media will destroy you. It will destroy you with, with, with what we're supposed to be and the highlight reel of everybody else. And, you know, like, like that's not real life. That's not real life. What's, what's, what's real life is sometimes it's hard and sometimes it's not good. But God is still good. And he always will be. So David is far from perfect and... He's far from sinless, and he made mistakes after mistake. But David does one thing that I believe is the secret of being labeled after a man of God's own heart. And that's what, that's what they say David is. It's what the Bible says. David is a man after God's own heart. Here, here, here's what it was. He worshiped God. Even when life wasn't perfect, he worshiped God. It always came back to worship, dancing like nobody's around and, and David is worshiping and he takes the Ark of the Covenant and he brings it back. He's like, hey, there's one thing that I, that I desire and that is to be in the secret place with God. And that's why he's the man after God's own heart because he's in the secret place with God. Here's the question. What's your rhythms of communication with God to keep you focused on God's plan for your life? What's your rhythms of communication with God? I have to set a time with him. I have to set aside a, a time that this is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to meet with God at this time. And, and, you know, and God has grace for me. He's not mad at me. If I'm, but, but I go every, every morning, I was telling somebody, I've got that monthly thing at Panera. And uh, you, know, you can get a drink like every two hours. I've got that, yeah. It's like thirteen ninety nine. I highly recommend it. But uh, yeah, but uh, I go to Panera every morning, uh, every school morning, and um, and I just spend time with the Lord, and um, and that helps me get my day. I'm a school counselor in a middle school, so y'all need y'all know I got to get my mind right, and um, <laughs> and uh, so I go there and I spend some time with the Lord and praying, and um, I've been doing a Terry Lee Cobbles Bible recap. I've been doing that, and uh, yeah, God's teaching me a lot through that. 
I love that. I love that so much. So the, the Psalms of David, are, they, you know, they're a roller coaster. And if you read, if you read the Psalms, it's always a roller coaster mo- emotion. And David's asking all the time, he's like, "Where are you at, God?" And, and and some people would say that's you know weakness in David, but I don't I don't believe it's weakness. I believe he's real with God. This is what missing in in most of our lives of us in this room and and, and myself is that many times we fake it till we make it. And you've heard that expression, and I've heard that all my life. You fake it till you make it. That's, that, that's not how you do this with God. I mean, that's contrary to what the word, you don't fake it till you make it. Like, like he wants you to be real with him. So, so David is real with God, and, and, and he's asking questions. Because, listen to this, I can lift my hands and still ask questions. And, and I can worship with questions, and I can praise with, I can clap, and I can dance, and I can jump, and I can sing, and still have questions. In Psalms 22, everybody loves Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I, know, I love that. I love it too. But I like Psalms 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is what David writes. He says, why are you so far from saving me? From the words of my groanings, oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, I find no rest. But then in verse 3, here, here in the, the first two verses of Psalms 22, he's asking questions. And, and then David gets it together. Like he has two verses of just like, this is horrible. And then verse 3, he gets it together and he's like, where are you at, God. I'm crying out and I can't hear you. I'm restless and I'm not in a good place. But then verse 3, he says this, yet you are holy. And he like flips the script on, on, on what's happening in this passage and what's happening in the emo- emotions of his life. And he flips the script and he's like, yet you are holy. And he says this, enthroned on the praises of Israel. He gets it together and he says, you're holy. He comes as a solution for his questions that he's asking God. And he's like, I know where you're at. I got it figured out. You inhabit our praise, God. And you dwell, you're close. And the rhythms of David's conversations with God have always just been so intriguing to me because he has these questions and, and, and he's talking to God and he's like, oh I, oh, I got it. I got it. I just need to get in your presence because your presence is there. And if I get in your presence, you'll speak to me. David's never holding anything back from God. And I believe many times in life we hold things back from God. And he's just like, say it. Just say it. The Bible, the Bible says, cast all your cares on me for I care for you. The Bible says his yoke is easy and his burden is what? Yeah. Yeah. So here's the question. I know, I know, Danny, I know you've had many opportunities as a worship pastor to, to leave and lay it down, and I have too. But what kept you from walking away? Uh, when you asked me that question the other day, this, the first thing came to my mind, and still today, is it's like we're Simon Peter, and Jesus says, are, are you guys going to leave? And Simon Peter says, Lord, where else would we go? To whom else would we go? You have the words of eternal life. And um, I've, I just know that he's my identity, like Christ is my identity. And so I've seen him be faithful too many times to give up, and he's not given up on me. So my dad died in 2016. Um, then my mom came to live with us, and she had a lot of health issues. Um, she lived with us for about five or six months, and then she ended up needing to go to an assisted living because her health got so much worse. In the middle of all that, 2020, uh, 2020 and part of 21, I lost uh, three grandparents. And then uh, August of this past, so 2023, my mom died. And um, so there's been a lot of, and then I'll be honest with you, um, we knew that God called us to have a little girl. And I want to be sensitive with this because I know there's so many people who are, this is a sensitive issue because a lot of people are trying to have kids and some, you know, aren't able to, or it comes in different ways. But for us, we were happy being single and, um, and, but God called us to have a little girl. And, and now I'm so glad he did. I wouldn't get to you know, take anything for her in the world, but it's been hard for us. 
and um, I'm just being honest with you, just being real with you, is it's been it's been hard for us that transition. And uh, we've been married for ten years. Then all of a sudden we got this little girl, and she's awesome. We love her, but parenting sometimes is not fun. <laughs> and um, in some in some yeah, and in some ways we've been mourning our old life. Just to be honest with you. And um, so it's like I, my mom died, and I quit being a son, but all of a sudden I was a dad. And I didn't have my parents to talk to about it and, and all these things. And um, anyways, it's just, it's, I've, I've struggled. And, um, but during this time, like I said, I'm going to try to make this story quick. Okay, we got to rewind just a little bit. When I was a junior in high school, I promise we'll get here fast. Okay. Junior in high school, my dad was a was a pastor. And I saw a lot of stuff and God really taught me a lot through that. But we had a hard time where my dad was actually asked to leave the church he was pastoring. And um, so we lost our house that because we were in a parsonage, we lost our house. We lost he lost his job. He started having to work our three to- three jobs. Uh, we lost all our friends. Um, my dad was struggling, and, and I have to say this just because I want protective of my dad. It wasn't his fault. There was a somebody spreading some lies who later admitted it because um, my dad didn't do anything wrong. Um, but so right then, I found out we're losing all this, and I was supposed to go be a camp counselor at Camp Bayoka. When I go up there, I take this Bible with me. And it's my dad's Bible. I didn't really think much about it, but I took my, this Bible with me. And in this Bible, it was a pretty worn Bible, but the only there was one scripture highlighted in the whole Bible, and it was Isaiah 43, 2. And every time I opened that Bible, even when I tried not to, it would just open right to that verse. You know, when you walk through the waters, it will not, over, not overflow thee. When you walk through the fires, it will not kindle upon thee, because I am the Lord your God. And that became my life verse from that, from that day on. And I uh, ended up telling it to a guy in a Bible study that one of those nights at that camp. He's like, dude, that's awesome. That's actually, I was in jail, and that's what Scripture got me through. And, and it just became my verse. Well, sometime... Um, Sometime in the middle of all that, uh, sometime I lost that Bible. And um, so, so I, you know, when Dad died, I was like, where is that Bible? I really want to see that Bible. I want to keep that Bible, make sure I have it. Never could find it. Well, in the middle of all this stuff I'm telling you about, like going through having to take care of my mom, my grandparents are dying, all this stuff. Actually, I had just gotten Isaiah 43.2 tattooed on my arm. I just just had that done. Well, like, right after that, Blair gets a call from her school counselor. So, her school counselor. And her school counselor ended up being the mom of a guy I played in a band with when I was about 16 years old. Seven, well, maybe 17. Well, her school counselor called and said, hey, I'm doing some cleaning out in my house, and I found this Bible, and, um, you know, would Danny like to have it? Well, you know, I was hoping it could be that Bible, but I really didn't think it was. Well, so she brings it, and it's it's that Bible. And not only that, I was telling Jason, not only that, I have that Bible that I had lost for 20 years, that God had spoken to me about how he was going to take care of me. But I get that Bible, and the little ribbon, you know, that keeps the place is still in Isaiah 43, 2. And um, so God was telling me, I'm, going to, I'm still taking care of you. Like, it's all still going to be okay. I haven't stopped taking care of you. And uh, that's why I can't give up on God, because um, he, he definitely hasn't given up on me. Give Danny a hand. I love, I love that story, um, and I love, I love that God's in the details of our life, and that what we think is insignificant, um, it's not insignificant to God. 